Um, good evening. And um, for those who don't know us, who don't know Wisma German, um, Wisma German is uh, the center for all activities related to Germany um, here in East Java. Um, we support bilateral cooperation between Indonesia and Germany, uh, especially in the fields of education, um, in particular language, culture, and uh, economy. We are an official partner of the Goethe Institute, um, which is the official language and culture institute of the German government. And uh, we offer German language classes here and uh, also for people who, uh, who uh, need some kind of proof for their proficiency um, in their German ability, um, they can take the exam with us and we also uh, issue the official Goethe certificates, which are a requirement for people who want to go to study or to live in Germany. Yeah, um, we are also the representation of the German Indonesian Chamber and in Industry and Commerce and uh, support German and Indonesian companies who want to uh, work together. And um, yeah, if you are interested in Germany, the German language and the German culture, uh, please feel free to see our website and our social media or contact us directly. And uh, of course, um, when the current situation uh, is back to a, to a normal situation, uh, we are also very happy to welcome you at our premises in Surabaya directly. So, um, before we start with today's uh, event, I would like to tell you a little story. Um, and I would like to ask you to use your imagination and try to picture the story. Um, imagine a young boy in Holland in the 1950s whose father was a captain of the Dutch Royal Navy and whose mother was born in Semarang, central Java. And they lived together in a house full of pictures of the Royal Navy in the Dutch Indies, which by that time had already become Indonesia. And uh, these exotic pictures of palm fringed beaches, crystal clear waters, and uh, pioneers and adventurers in their flying ships started a fascination in the little boy that would uh, last a li lifetime. And uh, already at a very young age, he would be fantasizing about flying boats in exotic sceneries and uh, make drawings of the pictures that he had in his mind. And uh, from then on, he would continue to spend much of his time to learn more about these uh, fascinating machines and the role they played in modern, in the development of modern aviation services like uh, passenger transport and airmail services. And during his journey, uh, he would visit many of the exotic locations that he dreamt about as a young boy. And he would go on to write uh, a total of five books so far about the Duonio Wall flying boat. And one of these locations uh, he visited um, is Surabaya because of the important role uh, Surabaya played for the flying boats in Indonesia. And on the occasion of his visit, um, he also came to Wisma German and uh, we had the opportunity to discuss with him um, the possibility of a joint event um, about the flying boats. And originally the event was supposed to be in March uh, this year, and it was supposed to be held at our premises in Wismar German. But uh, due to the coronavirus, um, just like many other activities, um, the planned event could not be implemented as it was originally supposed to. Um, but from the first meeting on, we uh, from Wismar German, we were uh, excited about the 
unique and highly interesting topic. And we were also intrigued by the passion that Mr. Funder may display uh, during his visit. And uh, therefore, we decided not to give up on this event and instead hold the event online. And yeah, here we are tonight. Um, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome the little boy uh, who has grown up to be an expert on flying boats. Uh, a very warm welcome to Mr. Michel van der Mee, who will be the speaker tonight. Thank you very much for being here with us tonight. Yeah, Mr. Van der Mee, he will uh, explain about the history of the Dornier Wall, and uh, he will invite us on a journey back to a time when the world was still full of adventures, where pioneers risked their own lives um, to explore the far corners of the earth and to push the advancement of technology for the sake of mankind. And he has brought documents and photographies and original film material that will further enable us to get a better understanding of the unique mode of transport that the flying boat is. We couldn't have organized this event uh, without the support of some people uh, who showed a similar passion for this event, like Mr. Van der Mee. And uh, I would like to, to take the opportunity to thank the people from Rexmo Global Consulting, uh, who approached us in the first place, yeah, um, and who supported us consistently during the preparation of this event. Thank you to Mr. Robin Taufmann, uh, Bu Ling, and Mr. Sasha Pagis. And now I would like to ask Mr. Robin Taufmann to address the audience and share some of his thoughts about the event. Please, Robin. Vielen, vielen Dank. Thank you very much for the, for the introduction. And yes, it is also our uh, wonderful pleasure, and we're really happy this is actually happening today. I actually got to, got to meet uh, Mr. Van der May last year, very much in his own house, where he was very nice to invite me and Sasha for, for a lunch, where he showed me his entire wonderful collection of this wonderful flying machine and also all the work he has really done. And that's where I really saw this person has really such a great enthusiasm for, for his topic. And I thought, wow, me, myself, I'm a pilot of aircraft, so I can fly aircraft. When I was young and I thought in my previous life, I would be one of those pioneers flying around the world, delivering mail, risking my own life. So I got my pilot's license and was trying to do that. And I was thinking one day, maybe we could bring those planes to Indonesia. Or actually Mr. Fanda May said, well, this was how it happened a long time ago. So I said, wow, maybe one day, one day I can also have a chance to fly one of these wonderful uh, aircraft around here. So we're really happy that uh, Mr. Van der Mee has really done all his research and I'm going to pass it on to him. So we thank you very much for this time and we wish everyone a wonderful learning experience tonight. Okay, thank you very much, Robin. Um, thank you for your point of view from a pilot's perspective. Um, me not being a pilot, uh, I have to that I hadn't heard of flying boats uh, at all before you approached us, and uh, I believe the same accounts probably for many of us. Um, therefore, I will not extend the wait uh, much longer and hand over to Mr. Van der May in a minute. But uh, before I do so, I have a few quick notes. Um, first, I would like to inform you that the event is being recorded. And if you do not agree with the recording, you can uh, leave uh, the room. Um, I hope, of course, that nobody will leave. Uh, um, secondly, I would like to mention that due to the medium that we use and uh, due to the age of the film materials, not all the films run uh, very smoothly, but uh, I would like to ask you to bear with us um, because Mr. Van der, Van der May will enhance these uh, film materials greatly with his uh, detailed explanations. And uh, also, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to write your questions in the chat. In the chat, um, and uh, yeah, we will be happy to forward your questions later on to Mr. Van der May, um, and he will answer them after his presentation. 
Lastly, I would like to uh, remind you to, go, to pay uh, good attention to what Mr. van der May is uh, explaining and showing us, because we will have a quiz at the end of the event. Um, and the three winners, um, they have the opportunity to win our Wisma German uh, 2019 Oktoberfest mug, which I will show later. So, um, and now I would like to wish everybody a highly interesting and entertaining evening, and please enjoy. Mr. van der May, the stage is yours. Selamat datang, Mr. Neuber. Welcome to all of you, wherever you are, I have seen the people from Africa, from uh, Indonesia, from Germany. Uh, I'm very happy for, for your interest and, um, in this very interesting uh, uh, concept. I will now go to my Bildschirm teilen. Yeah. Again, welcome. Welcome, Slama uh, Datang. Uh, yes, you will. Uh, you will be. Um, you will see. A flying boat. What is a flying boat? A flying boat is, an, is a boat that lands into the water. This in comparison with a seaplane which has two drifters. But you will see that uh, later on as well. Um, yes. The the, uh, the greatest fire, uh, the, uh, the greatest flying boat builder, in fact, was uh, uh, Claude Dornier, um, a, um, uh, a German with a French name, as his parents were uh, wine sellers in the south of Germany. And uh, he um, uh, visited the University of Munich and uh, uh, met their other uh, future um, pioneers of aviation, such as uh, uh, Gianni Caproni. And um, Claude Dornier started to work with uh, another pioneer, uh, that was Count uh, Zeppelin, and uh, he started to work for him in 1910. And uh, during the First World War, was moving towards uh, uh, towards his uh, experience of uh, was putting his experience in the construction of aircraft, and step by step towards uh, flying boats. And his greatest design was the Dornier Val. Um, a uh, flying boat uh, uh, that did not uh, took part of the in the First World War and could not be constructed uh, um, in Germany because of the uh, Treaty of Versailles that forbade Germany to construct uh, engine aircraft. Um, So he had to look for an uh, other solution, and he found a solution in Italy, and he uh, uh, founded the first uh, international aviation joint venture in the world in uh, 1922. Um, that was the Cemasa uh, in uh, Marina di Pisa. And uh, you may imagine, so his partners were Italian from Toscana, and so he, um, uh, a design, a beautiful design was made for the company. Uh, we are talking about flying boats, so you see a boat, 
and Icarus, uh, the famous man from the Greek uh, mythology that uh, flew. Um, and a line, of course, uh, from the Divina uh, Commedia that proved to be uh, very, uh, yeah, that proved um, part of the meaning of the, and the use of the, of in the operations of the Dornier Waal. That was uh, um, Lumen per lo mar venir, a light coming over the sea. And it, uh, then the line of, uh, the, uh, of Dante Alighieri continues, is, uh, this is an invention that cannot even be compared with a boat. The first flying boat was uh, launched in Marina di Pisa. Uh, and on the back you see the, uh, the nets of the, uh, of the fishermen on the river Arno at the mouth of uh, towards the Mediterranean Sea. And the first uh, boat, uh, be careful, uh, if you're talking about a boat, uh, moved into his uh, main element on the 6th of November 1922 with two wooden uh, wheels. Uh, why were they of, uh, of uh, uh, wood, they could drift on the water, but they had to be uh, to be put down, uh, on the flying boat by hand in the water. And this yard in Marina di Pisa used to develop it, of, uh, was able to develop itself as a worldwide of reference for the construction of flying boats. And uh, you know, and I will repeat this several times, two thirds of our beautiful blue planet consists of water. And uh, I will also tell you why later on, why uh, the development of a, a flying boat stopped for, very year, uh, for many, many, many years and is only now taking uh, path again. Out of the Dornier Well, a whole family of uh, uh, flying boats were developed. Uh, uh, two predecessors, um, uh, big uh, flying boats uh, made on the Lake Constance, Stans, and the first version in uh, Marina di Pisa in 1922. And, very, and, and several versions, and you will see um, the Dornier Wall was and is still the most uh, internationally uh, constructed uh, airplane from Germany in all its hundred years of history. As it was also uh, made in uh, not even only uh, in Italy but also in Japan, in, uh, in uh, uh, the Netherlands, in Spain, in uh, Russia and uh, so there is no other um, German plane that had such an international history. And I will now give you an impression, of, of the very first impression of the wall. Uh, with the DOX, which was in fact the most beautiful, uh, most famous Dornier uh, Waal, but the giant one. And as you can see here, the Dornier Waal was able to land on the water and on the uh, on snow, in tundras, on ice, as you will see uh, during this presentation. With the Dornier Wall, uh, many pioneer flights were made. Um, uh, the Dornier Wall gained his name uh, because of the 
famous expedition of Roald Amundsen, a famous German, uh, a famous Norwegian, uh, a famous Norwegian uh, polar explorer, that bought two flying boats for his uh, uh, expedition to the uh, to the North Pole, and after that. Uh, and I will come into, uh, I will tell you about the other uh, uh, main uh, pioneer flights. Uh, the first one from uh, uh, from Spain to South America by Ramon Franco in 1926. The one uh, from the Portuguese Sarmento de Baires, uh, a night crossing from uh, Africa to uh, uh, Brazil and uh, the DOX which, uh, which made the world uh, tour to America, and South America, North America and in 1929 for example another one that was uh, a group of uh, three Tornier whales that flew from the island, Dutch island of Tessel to Indonesia. Unfortunately, one of the planes uh, crashed on the Euphrat in, uh, in what is now called uh, Iraq. And uh, then two, uh, in fact, two Tornier Wals arrived in Tanjung Priok in, uh, in April uh, 29. And uh, uh, however, one of them burned down because of an uh, accident while refueling uh, the, the flying boat. So, in fact, only one was able to reach uh, Surabaya. Um, as told, the, um, the famous explorer uh, Roald Amundsen flew in, uh, um, in uh, June uh, in May, June, from Spitsbergen to uh, towards the North Pole, and uh, with the two uh, flying boats, uh, the N25 and the N26, towards the North Pole. And uh, Amundsen, uh, in his uh, arrogance, I have to say, uh, but later on he said yes because of, of uh, uh, engine troubles. We had to make an uh, emergency landing on the, the, uh, the on the ice cap, and uh, uh, the second, um, as agreed before, the second uh, uh, flying boat landed as well on the ice cap, and uh, and apart from each other, of course. And first, they had big difficulties to unite together, at least as one of the flying boat was unable to. Uh, uh, as they knew already because of the troubles they had experienced before while uh, taking off. Um, they uh, had only one solution to um, return to Spitsbergen with one uh, flying boat with, the, the, with a double crew, crew and uh, they had to face, uh, to create an uh, um, a place to take off uh, in the ice and in the water. They had to make this by by hand, and this took about a month to realize. And um, during the world of uh, during this time, the world press was uh, informing the general public that uh, um, the famous explorer, uh, who already had been on the North Pole and on the South Pole um, had disappeared uh, in an effort to reach the North Pole. But after a uh, um, really forced labor and on very little food rations, they succeeded uh, in the end with the, with the help of a, um, of a seal hunter to return to uh, uh, to Spitsbergen. In 
and the Spitsbergen, a little monument was erected that, to this uh, uh, expedition, which was later replaced by a modern one, but this is the original one. Yeah, as told Ramon Franco, the, um, as the French, uh, the, the Spanish were the first users uh, of the Dornier Val, succeeded in making a uh, voyage to uh, um, uh, to uh, Buenos Aires, crossing the for the first time the South Atlantic. Already they had prepared the, the voyage by leaving. Uh, uh, second engine in uh, Azores and uh, um, also um, it was taken care that enough uh, uh, combustion was uh, placed in uh, the Azores and the island Fernando de Noronha and Natal in Brazil and um, uh, over uh, uh, Montevideo they arrived uh, in uh, uh, Buenos Aires. Yeah, the first light over the sea was the uh, the Portuguese Argos uh, um, of Sarmento de Bares that uh, crossed the, uh, the southern Atlantic uh, 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 before starting they had um, made uh, some experiments in case of emergency, in case of an emergency landing in the ocean, that they would be able to sail with the boat. And they had uh, tried that before on the Tejas uh, um, River in Lisboa. As of, uh, uh, Sarmento de Barres, he intended to continue after Brazil in a voyage around the world, but uh, had uh, a shipwrecked up off the Amazonas River, but he was saved. And the uh, second one who tried to do so was uh, Ramon Franco in his uh, flying boat in the New Mancha, but uh, he will had to make an emergency landing in the at South Atlantic, and he had the luck to be uh, to be um, saved by the British aircraft carrier uh, Eagle, which brought him to uh, Gibraltar. And from Gibraltar, his uh, boat was uh, uh, turked to uh, Cartagena in uh, Spain. Ramon Franco, uh, of Ramon, uh, uh, Wolfgang von Gronau uh, was a uh, pioneer pilot of the First World War of the Imperial uh, German Navy and um, he was already an ace pilot in those times after the war. He uh, was one of the pioneers of civil aviation and uh, training and the school of aviation in uh, Warnemunde. And um, they founded a new school on the island of Silt. And uh, from there, um, uh, the, this pilot uh, school uh, uh, bought the old Amundsen Wall and uh, re-equipped it and uh, tried to uh, started to make long-range uh, uh, flights towards Reykjavik from uh, the island of Silt and uh, having seen that the plane was able to do so it was decided in uh, it was illegally decided to fly to uh, to uh, the new world in 1930 and uh, by the time that uh, reports reached uh, uh, Berlin uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, Wolfgang von Grono had landed in Greenland, uh, the ministries were uh, very angry with him, but uh, uh, that storm passed uh, when he landed successfully in, uh, um, in New York City. And he was uh, he was to make several other flights, as you have seen in the uh, 
last but um, one of the last uh, dias, we went uh, several uh, made uh, made several flights to Greenland uh, and uh, Chicago, and in Greenland he. Uh, discovered for the first time uh, by European a uh, new ridge of uh, mountains, the Von Gono non attacker Yeah, this was the, uh, all came from the Deutsche Verkehrsflieger Schule. He uh, uh, got the permission to make a uh, try for a real uh, um, uh, flight around the world in uh, 1932. And, uh, on every um, on every point where he uh, landed, he would uh, send uh, letters to the Deutsche Verkehrsfliegerschule, the pilot school on the islands of uh, Silt in Germany, and he even uh, uh, passed Indonesia, as you can see, Tarakan, and then uh, Surabaya, where his uh, uh, Dornier Waal was, uh, re, uh, was main, maintained and re-equipped for the, his further voyage. The Dutch made that uh, trip of uh, three Dornier Waals uh, towards uh, uh, the island of Java, as it was uh, called, the Dutch East Indies flight. 1929. Wolfgang von Gronau was the, the restrainer, as we have seen, of the North Atlantic and Greenland. And imagine eh, those pilots, uh, Amundsen and von Gronau, were flying in polar circumstances in open cockpits. And the same uh, was done in uh, Indonesia later on by the Dutch and the Indonesian crew members um, in Indonesia in tropical circumstances. Yeah, on his journey, um, or, uh, we all know, the, we might all know uh, the story of Jules Verne, the, uh, the trip around the world in in 80 days. Now Wolfgang von Gronau needed in 1932 110 days to return to Germany, and he also landed in uh, um, he also landed in uh, Shanghai. The Spanish used it uh, in uh, Spain and uh, in Morocco. And this is an impression of the German Verkehrs Verkehrsfliegerschule um, with the famous uh, uh, with the famous uh, Amundsen roll with his German recognition sign T1422. There was also a uh, passenger flying boat here, the High, who served the Lufthansa. Uh, you see another um, famous. Uh, seaplane, um, the Junker F-13, and Junker was also uh, able, was also playing an important role in the development uh, of catapults. They already started that uh, development during the First World War, but in the end it was only uh, uh, realized in uh, um, um, just after the uh, First World War. Yeah, you met already the flying boat, uh, uh, the passenger flying boat High, at the uh, hangar of the Deutsche Verkehrsfliegerschule. The first two were the Atlantico and Pacifico that were ordered by two uh, German immigrants in Colombia to develop uh, air transport in uh, uh, in uh, Colombia, that was done in the German uh, uh, Colombian uh, um, airline uh, company Scatta. And this flying boat was uh, 
under good uh, circumstances, able to fly 185 kilometers an hour, and that the minimum was well, um, with wind ahead, 85 kilometers. Uh, at the same time, as, the, as you know, the first uh, 110 flying boats were constructed in Marina di Pisa in, and in uh, Liguria um, uh, by the Cimasa in Marina di Pisa. And as you have seen, it really became, uh, thanks to the export numbers, uh, a worldwide uh, point of reference. The first uh, seven, eight uh, Dutch uh, uh, flying boats were also called Pisa boats, as the, the first five originated completely from uh, Marina di Pisa, later on from um, uh, Aviolanda, close to Rotterdam. So I'm happy to invite you to make an uh, 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 a short impression of a line towards uh, uh, from Rome towards uh, Marina uh, towards um, uh, Genova. Uh, yeah, so at the Bocca uh, Tevere at Ostia, Roma Ostia, an um, airport was constructed. And as you can see, a flying boat is a boat, so all the people around it are sailors. Uh, if you wanted to fly in Germany a flying boat, you first needed a uh, um, captain patent to, uh, to fly the flying boat. And we'll, uh, the flying boat, uh, the Dornier Wall had a pull and a push uh, engine and the portholes were able to open and uh, these are star motors and you see the, the lines for the boat so it is an, uh, a hybrid a hybrid between a boat and an airplane but keep in mind our blue world consists of two thirds of water I will tell you later on why that is still important. You see the enjoyment of the people uh, on board. Um, the pilots were sitting a bit higher. And the uh, wheel means, uh, uh, of wal, Dornje wal means uh, wheel in German, wal. And uh, the people entered the boat. Um, through uh, through uh, the nose and you know a whale has a nose on top of the animal and uh, not only along the uh, Tyrrhenian coast but also on the uh, Ionian coast uh, and the Adriatic coast um, the uh, Dornier whale was used especially from the from Brindisi to uh, Athens and uh, Istanbul and further on to Odessa and the Rhodos. In South America I talked about uh, Colombia. At the same time in uh, a joint venture was uh, uh, founded by the Lufthansa with uh, um, Brazilians that became the Sindicato Condor Limitado and they had a, a very interesting uh, uh, a very interesting uh, uh, advertisement publicity uh, in the past before the Sindicato Condor, Condor was created um, you needed an uh, uh, you needed an, uh, uh, a steamship uh, to drive, to uh, sail along the coast uh, for six days and then uh, uh, um, 
and in the time of the syndicatum you only need it uh, one day by air. And this is a later uh, version of the Dornier well. As in, well. As in Germany was also uh, uh, developing an uh, airline system, first from Danzig, uh, later on uh, uh, more around the, the northern coast of Germany, as, uh, in this case from uh, uh, Bremerhaven, there was an, uh, a line for uh, uh, for a holiday line from Bremerhaven to Helgoland, Helgoland. Yeah, because of the interest of the Lufthansa in South America and the interest of the German uh, uh, government, it was decided to develop an, uh, the longest airline uh, in the world from Germany over Africa uh, towards Brazil and for that they needed um, to um, shorten the disc and an, uh, um, an, uh, catapult tender to um, the first one was the, uh, uh, was the Westfalen and uh, that was equipped with a big uh, crane on, its, uh, on the back of the ship and on the front of the ship, a big uh, um, uh, Henkel uh, catapult launch was constructed. And if the boat was, uh, the flying boat was in Bornei, that's coming now. Uh, the British press was very interested because uh, the German government, government asked permission for a civil service uh, from the, um, uh, the British colony of Gambia in West Africa towards uh, Brazil. So they were very keen to know exactly what was being uh, proposed. And then the Germans came up with this, uh, uh, this design. The flying boat had to land on the, uh, on the ocean. Then it was, um, it would maneuver towards a drag sail and the big, uh, uh, to get under the, uh, the crane and to, to smooth the water, and that's why they had the track uh, uh, sail, and then the crane would uh, um, would hoist the board, uh, the flying boat uh, on board, and then the uh, then the um, the flying boat had to be maneuvered around the mast and the stag and the bridge. Uh, towards the slit, um, towards the sled on the on the catapult launch launcher. Oh, moment, excuse me. Yeah, you will see, uh, I told you about the Hankel uh, catapult la launcher. Um, so, uh, very important was the sled and the, the mechanics of the, um, of the air pressured, uh, of the air pressured uh, launcher. And you see here the construction at the island of Fernando Noronha. Fernando Noronha is the top of an undersea mountain ridge in, uh, in the Atlantic and uh, it was used by the Brazilians as a prisoner island and the uh, Germans were allowed to, uh, to use it as a, st as, a trans um, as a point of rest for the uh, flying boats to refuel and, uh, um, and uh, one of the catapult ships was allowed to uh, to be stationed there, and uh, Fernando de Noronha has an interesting uh, history, as it was also part of the Dutch West India Company. And you see here the maneuvering of a DO-17 towards the drag sail, and um, 
the difficult things you know, they had uh, to uh, get the flying boat on board of the uh, catapult ship. And you see that it, uh, it also had to track sail uh, and to make it quieter for the uh, flying boat. They also uh, the catapult ship uh, was also once summoned towards the uh, the O seventeen the Bernier well to uh, assist in an emergency as this flying boat had to make an emergency landing uh, in the Atlantic and uh, um, the fly this catapult ship was able to come in time and uh, assisted uh, the, by tugging uh, first the flying boat and then taking the fly, uh, flying boat on board as soon as it was quiet enough. You will see this operation is moving now towards the next uh, the radio operator and I got this film uh, thanks to the, his son in uh, in Erlangen, uh, close to Nuremberg, and uh, he always had to report um, the the weather uh, conditions in the South Atlantic towards the weather station in Hamburg, and uh, had to report, had to uh, guide the flying boats. Um, that were coming twice a week towards the catapult ship um, one, uh, one time on its way to South America and one time on its way back. You will see here the, the uh, maneuvering of getting the, uh, the flying boat on board. In this uh, case on board of the smallest catapult ship of the four that they had. This one there was the Ostmark, well, it was in there. and uh, then uh, you see this is the smallest boat, uh, the smallest ship, almost a boat that had only one catapult instead of uh, two. In the case of uh, uh, of the Friesenland, uh, the most modern one for the North Atlantic. And, uh, you see here too it is sailor work I refer to the other task of the catapult ship being a weather ship for the weather station in Hamburg and for that a weather balloon was uh, put into the air and as the rations were also uh, very uh, limited uh, people tended to uh, of the sailors tended to fish as well to improve their diet and then uh, yeah when the ship was waiting for the flying boat it was mostly at anchor and you see the heavy work they had to do and now they will, they will see the and the, uh, the the place where the the dashboard from where the um, catapult was uh, being used. This is a 10 tons uh, Dornier, the heaviest one um, that was ever constructed, able to take uh, three and a half thousand uh, kilos of uh, meal towards uh, South America. And this was the first step towards uh, uh, passenger services. This was never realized as the last. Um, uh, trip across the uh, ocean was made in uh, August 1939, just before the um, beginning of the First World War, and then it was officially reported to the British government that the, the line was, because of the international circumstances, the, the, the line was stopped and the catapult ship had to be had to retire to uh, the Canary Islands. However, they did not. They went to Portuguese Guinea. Um, this was the start uh, of the catapult on, again, on board.
Noord of the Schwaben, nee, on the board of the Ostmark again, you see the, um, the Lufthansa flag and the radio masts are now being lowered to be able to, um, to launch the, uh, to, to be able to launch the flying boats and these are DO 17s. I know that one of the, uh, one of the uh, participants from Germany is interested in particular in this part. Then you will now fly away in 10 seconds to more than 100 kilometers an hour in the air towards South America. Yes, in those days, theoretically, um, um, airmail could be transported from Berlin to uh, uh, Rio de Janeiro in, uh, in four days. However, nowadays it is differently. Sometimes it takes months to, for me to, to have a, a, a book uh, transported to Brazil or uh, uh, Argentina. This was Bataman, uh, 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 one of the first catapult masters uh, on the board of the Westfalen and uh, at, the, uh, yeah, at his uh, dashboard here. Um, the second uh, ship we have already noticed before that was the Schabendam, that was the most uh, the second most modern uh, uh, catapult ship that went uh, that was sent uh, uh, in the, during the Third Reich towards uh, uh, Schwabenland to, uh, towards Antarctica to discover there uh, the Antarctica as I told you also on the North Atlantic, uh, catapult flights were made, especially from, uh, uh, from passenger ships such as the Bremen. And this was a, sh a ship to shore air mail uh, from the uh, United States towards Europe. And the catapult plane was launched uh, in South Amsterdam. In Britain. Yes, as I told, the, uh, the, um, the Schwabenland went to Antarctica. Um, really, they uh, did make reconnaissance flights over, the, um, uh, over Antarctica, and there also mountains were discovered. It was first uh, discovered that it was. Uh, yeah, a real continent. Or maybe already uh, Amundsen, as the first one discovered, realized that it was uh, land. But anyhow, they, uh, they discovered several uh, mountains and ridges there. As uh, reported, uh, Dutch for most of the Dutch walls were uh, constructed in under license by. Uh, on the uh, Dornier license by Aviolanda in Papendrecht, close to Rotterdam. And they reported in, uh, uh, and of the, uh, operated in groups of uh, three. And this play, uh, this photograph is very interesting. Behind it, it was printed that it was not allowed to be published without permission of the of the commanding officer of Moroccan Maran. So I planned to ask permission to the government of the Academy Ankatan Laut in uh, Moroccan Bangan uh, permission to publish this photograph. As uh, the Academy Ankatan Laut is constructed in the, uh, on the site of the old naval air station. 
Ja, de Donje Waals in particular became the eyes of the Dutch fleet in the Indies. And here they have a, a meeting uh, with, a meet up with the, uh, with a gunboat of the Navy on a, in a bay of, uh, on uh, uh, Sulawesi. Please to, uh, to give you the opportunity to, uh, to see uh, Morocco Mangan as it was the pivot of the Dutch uh, maritime air presence. Uh, um, South Asia with Moro Kembangan. Yes. A lot of coming. A lot more. Kembangan. Yes. Pivot of Dutch maritime air. Yeah. Present of Surabaya. I could make a JC, Surabaya. No, I'm as uh, told by uh, Mr. Uh, Neuber, I visited uh, Surabaya in uh, March 2020 and there I met the guard of the tomb of a crew of the crew of the Tournier uh, D26 that crashed that crashed during a night flying accident uh, with a uh, with a, a night uh, flying torch in April uh, 1932 and there are lots of stories uh, about this man. When we passed for the first time, I had the impression that he was standing waiting for me. Uh, but when I arrived there, he was sitting and waiting to see the book with all the advantage uh, of the adventures of the Dutch and Indonesian crews of the flying boats uh, during the 20s and 30s in the uh, Indonesia. Welcome in Surabaya 1934. And this is, uh, these are pros coming from, uh, from Madura. And Morungambangan, and they had to dredge all the time by the uh, by the firm, Mr. Van, o uh, Van Oort, and I think he's still active in developing the the port of Surabaya nowadays. Look, the huge the flying boat is, um, and that's um, this is an, uh, a Fokker uh, a bomber of which there were. Uh, uh, 12 stations on uh, uh, about 12 stations on Morakambangan, but the uh, the Dornier well was the the heart of the um, uh, of the maritime air presence of the Dutch in the East Indies, and they also had, as we have seen in uh, uh, on the catapult ships, winches able to uh, uh, to tuck the uh, the flying boats in when the flying boats were landing this is somewhere else than uh, uh, Surabaya um, they always attracted huge crowds of people looking at this uh, flying boats um, and uh, showing its presence uh, in the Indies, and uh, uh, there were also always volunteers, uh, people interested to help uh, refueling the flying boats. And uh, um, as we can see here, there were also uh, um, this is a, uh, a policeman and. Uh, in over 100 places there were uh, shelters where uh, uh, combustion was stored under the uh, in charge of the 
lighthouse uh, uh, master or the, uh, uh, the schoolmaster or even an, uh, 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 an evangelical uh, pastor. Um, here we are in the center of Surabaya, the occasion of the birthday parade for uh, Queen uh, Wilhelmina in 1935, so 34-35, and uh, passing the Japanese uh, Trade Museum. And uh, a few years later, the East Indies were in war with Japan. With all the Kata. Yeah. Um, this one, the, the man in front, was uh, uh, Step Rombeek from, and he, I got this film from his widow who died uh, with uh, in the age at the age of 100 years in 19 of in 2007, uh, 2010, I think. Yeah, and the government, uh, the governor of the West Java coming back. Now you will have an impression. Uh, of the of the naval air station uh, Bangan, where uh, Dornje Wal flying boats and later on um, Dornje 24 K's were um, assembled and maintained and there was also the facility to make spare parts uh, uh, in Surabaya so you will see many Indonesians working there in the metallurgical uh, profession and uh, also uh, in the fabric uh, uh, main uh, in the fabric uh, fabrication. You see here a little Fokker and reconnaissance plane uh, leaving. Uh, this is a float plane again. And you see here the flying boats and uh, uh, making the accident, uh, exercise of making a circle star because there's little wind to fly in a circle and to get uh, enough wind, uh, waves to take off. As you can see here. Now flying over the port of Perak. And uh, Morukambangan. And the naval port of Perak. So, to show you what, uh, this is a Pisa boat, one of them was constructed then in, uh, um, in the Marina di Pisa that came to, um, to Morocambangan in 1927. Yeah, the groups of uh, uh, flying boats had to uh, report every day wherever they were outside uh, uh, outside uh, Mokambangan uh, by radio and you see here this uh, sled which was constructed in uh, uh, in uh, Surabaya also the winches even wooden benches if necessary. You see the first uh, traffic control uh, tower, the mast for uh, to keep contact with the, uh, the groups of, uh, of flying boats. Uh, 
and uh, the Dutch did realize that uh, Indonesia is a country as big as west of Ireland till Kazakhstan nowadays. And you see it was a, a very uh, modern uh, um, configuration with little uh, tractors to, uh, to transport the engines, you know, the engine uh, setups and uh, to be able to uh, refurbish the, and, and check the engines itself. There was even a dry dock that could be tucked to faraway places to repair um, flying boats on site. Um, as I told you, uh, the, more, uh, the Fokkers were all constructed with uh, fabrics. However, the Dornier Wal was a metal uh, flying boat, but parts of the uh, of the uh, uh, wings were also of uh, fabrics, which also had its advantage as it was said at the time. And there was of course a wet lab uh, in Morokambangan. And the metallurgical lab, the metallurgical research, And of course, uh, the, um, the flying boats had a steel um, frame, but were covered with uh, dual aluminium. And parts of the, uh, the wings were uh, also had fabrics. But very important was uh, the metal uh, metallurgical departments. And you will see. Uh, uh, that many, many, many Indonesians were working there and I think were very important for the development of the metal industry in uh, Surabaya. You see the, uh, the phrasing machines. Hangers, you see, and, yeah, and uh, they were all on the sleds and on the rails so that they can could relatively fast be put into the water. And, they were, and there were three groups: one were operational, one were being maintained, and one uh, group were in reserve. As you can see, yeah, of course, they had an, uh, um, a military uh, uh, operational. Yeah, this is important. This is a Davids uh, from which the bombs were uh, were dropped from a Dornier wall, so they were not very um, very exact. And I know of one operation in which a Dornier wall was used uh, to drop bombs. That was uh, at the mutiny of the uh, of the Zebra Province uh, in the, uh, 1933. Uh, I would like to recalculate uh, that uh, two thirds of the world was uh, consists of uh, of water, and uh, so the Dornier well was also used uh, to um, to uh, inspect the sea lanes, uh, inspect the the fishing grounds, and uh, uh, look for smugglers. Um, uh, Two kinds of smugglers of precious uh, um, pearls or uh, precious metals or whatever, but also of uh, of opium etc. and drugs. So they landed, and that's why the crews most of the time had mixed uh, Indonesian Dutch crews to be able to communicate with the skippers of the. Of the flying boat, uh, of the uh, of the insular traffic. 
And here you see an opium hunter, this time in the eastern part of the, uh, of the um, uh, archipelago. And uh, these ships were uh, in Indonesia called the Cabal uh, uh, Puti, the white ships. And I told you about the uh, uh, secretive base shelters with consumables and uh, and uh, um, consumables and uh, uh, combustion barrels of and you see here the flying boat uh, at anchor and um, a pro would take the uh, the barrel to the boat and then they had to be refueled by hand as we have seen uh, several times when new ships came to uh, Surabaya of the navy they were welcomed by a group of uh, by a group of uh, flying boats from Morokambangan and uh, in this case two new destroyers arrived here and they left Excuse me. The flying boats left by making an, uh, uh, the left the roads of uh, Surabaya by making on uh, uh, a circle start, which for which the Dornier Mal was famous for. And uh, uh, as you can see, there is no wind here. That uh, occasionally rather often happens around the Morokambangan and Surabaya, so they left, they made, the, they made their, um, their uh, circle start. They also made that at uh, visits, uh, for example, in, to Sing Singapore, and the British were jealous seeing the Dutch able to do so, to, uh, to start in circumstances that the British were unable to start with their uh, seaplanes as they did, did not have flying boats in those days. Now, as I told you, all over the archipel there were shelters, often uh, uh, in settlements of, such as the Shell in Tarakan, Balikpapan, uh, in New Guinea. But also the flying boats were used to, uh, to bring civil servants or uh, Doctor specialist from uh, the uh, University College of Batavia, two far away places where there were um, epidemies and uh, which could not, uh, where they had to try to uh, dam the, those epidemies. And you see here uh, the captain of the uh, army, captain of the colonial army, and this is done the, the navy. And this is the specialist. Sometimes they had uh, uh, difficulties. They, uh, the, the bottom of the flying boat was damaged by a reef uh, close to the Tanat Jampea, so about the middle of the archipelago. And uh, uh, fortunately, there were wheels, so uh, uh, together with the uh, the population of local kampongs, they were able to push the, the boat to the shore and you will see the big uh, uh, hole of the, of, uh, they had a big hole here underneath and together with uh, locals they uh, succeeded in uh, repairing it by their own means. And that is called a small repair. And sometimes the groups of flying boats made gunnery practices, and they thought they would expect, uh, meet such flying boats later on, they would learn otherwise. Yeah, 
uh, Indonesia has about 15,000 islands and uh, uh, very often there are eruptions and earthquakes, sea quakes, etc. And I'm happy to tell you, to inform you that the great, great, great uh, grandson of the Dornier Wall is now being constructed uh, in Germany and but later on somewhere uh, in, uh, in uh, East Asia and uh, uh, as you can see it can be equipped uh, as an ambulance plane uh, and uh, can be used for custom services uh, against uh, drug, uh, drug uh, criminals uh, they can search and have they remain a, uh, a light coming over the ocean. And the first one flew the 28th of March 2020 uh, over the Lake of Constance in Germany. Prima Kasi, thank you. And my book is in Germany available at Messrs. Rexmo, uh, Mrs. Ling. And uh, uh, more information about the book can be found on the, on the uh, website uh, www.darnier-wall.com. I have to stop. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Van der Mee, for your presentation. Um, thank you for the detailed explanations about the Dornier Wall and its usage, uh, not only in Indonesia, but all over the world. I think we have seen um, it played a crucial role um, for the development of air mail service, uh, aviation services like air mail, um, and also for passenger transport. Um, and uh, now we come to our uh, question and answer session. Um, we have already some questions um, in the chat, but also for others who still have questions, please feel free uh, to write them in the chat. Um, I think the first question uh, was by pa Adi Laksmana and he was asking uh, how many passengers uh, could be carried by the flying boat, Mr. Van der Mee? You can still hear me, yeah? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. It is a pleasure seeing you, uh, Adi Laksmana. Thank you for your question. Um, uh, it depends, uh, it depended on the uh, on the weight of the passengers. I have passengers, uh, I have films in which you see young uh, boys being transported and there will be more than, uh, than uh, adults on board of the ship. So uh, you can say that it would be something around between six and eight passengers. Still very small. Yeah, now, now there is a more detailed question regarding this. Um, if a person weighed a hundred kilogram, um, how many would have fitted in the Dornier Wall? <laughs> <laughs> that is the one for the question. The, for the, uh, for the, um, it still depended also on on his, uh, yeah, on his size. Eh? Mm. <laughs> okay. No. But I think we could see from the video um, that the passengers were quite happy with the comfort they had in the Donia Wall. Yeah, you could see they were uh, laughing and were happy to be uh, in that uh, airplane or flying boat. Um, okay, um, and the next question um, was uh, whether there was a military version of the Donia Wall that was also being used during the war. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the Dornier Wall flew in training missions uh, till the uh, capitulation of uh, the Netherlands East Indies in uh, the 8th of uh, March 1942. Uh, there were uh, three or four left 
and it, well, I know one uh, um, pilot student that uh, claimed to have noticed a Japanese uh, submarine sailing under uh, under water uh, not far from uh, Morokambangan uh, during his training sessions, uh, but that was not believed. But um, uh, so, but uh, from 1938 onwards, or in, in fact, uh, 38, um, uh, the new Dornier uh, D24K was uh, being shipped to Surabaya and assembled in Morokambangan. So, uh, the, uh, the real flying boats that saw action uh, during the invasion of uh, uh, the former Dutch East Indies was the DO-24K and the Catalinas that were uh, bought after the fall of the Netherlands in May 1940 uh, in the States. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and then one of the questions was also, uh, you were just talking about Moro Krimbangan. Um, one of the questions was uh, why Moro Krimbangan was chosen as a location for for this this uh, station of the flying boats. Yeah, you may have uh, you may have seen that uh, it was very flat. So uh, Dutch company, I think also Van Oort, uh, dried a piece of land and uh, uh, around the uh, Morokampanga and uh, uh, you can hear me? Yes. Uh, in 1925 it was then, uh, uh, then it was started to create a, a naval port in Surabaya. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, it was the uh, naval air station, yeah. Okay, um, then I have a question. Um, I'm in, uh, interested in how long were they actually used uh, until what year and uh, why were they discontinued? Like, why did they stop to use the Dornier Yeah, well, as you have uh, noticed, the first uh, Dornier Wals appeared in 1922. Uh, the very, 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 very last ones in Spain were uh, put out of service on the Canary Islands in 1950. But uh, the Dutch did not uh, use them, uh, uh, stopped you, uh, because of the fall of Java, uh, stopped using them in 1942. Okay. Okay. Um... I'm looking for the other questions. There is one big question actually in the room that many people asked. Um, I kept it a little bit, but now I will ask you. Um, people are wondering about the statue, of course, the statue yeah. in Surabaya. <laughs> yeah, that is my friend. He has been waiting for me for 88 years to receive my book. And uh, I uh, I knew that he was. You can hear me. Yes, we can. Uh, um, I knew about this uh, tomb for many years, and I um, uh, I decided for myself if I would ever come to uh, uh, Surabaya, I would visit uh, this tomb. And I was happy to, uh, to uh, visit the tomb uh, uh, in March. And uh, it was incredible to see first, well, driving, passing it towards the, uh, uh, the other, the military, uh, uh, towards the military cemetery of Kamang uh, uh, Um uh, We passed the civil one and I, I yelled to Ying, uh, to Ling, look, look, here we have to stop. And then we were able to, uh, to visit uh, uh, the guards uh, of the tomb. 
and uh, I had the impression that he was standing there. But when we arrived there, he was sitting, and I uh, was able him to. to uh, I was able to show him the book and the photographs, and I'm, I'm sure that he was not any longer sad, but now happy that at last he had seen this. Good. Yeah, people, people are wondering uh, a little bit about the background of the statue. Um, why is it there in uh, Kambang Kuning burial place and uh, who, who is it? What is the story behind it? The story behind it is very much uh, going along the lines of, uh, uh, of the title of my book, A Light Coming Over the Sea. As, uh, the Dutch started very early in uh, making night flights with the Dornier Wal, um, equipping the flying boat at the uh, starboard side of the wing with a strong um, uh, with a strong uh, searchlight, uh, which would also be uh, which was also used uh, while landing. Uh, in bays in order to avoid uh, reefs and corals and uh, whatever. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, so this was very early um, in the aviation history. Uh, other air forces started making these kinds of operations Later, I already mentioned the, uh, the experiences of the, the British. As the uh, sea bridges were operated by the RAF, they were not very keen in, in night flying. And then uh, uh, the Royal Navy did not have any uh, uh, flying boats. So uh, the Dutch were very early in this development. I would like to uh, welcome uh, Captain Novera Lesmana, uh, the, um, the uh, captain of the Ankatan Laut uh, from the, 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 the defense attaché, naval attaché in The Hague. And I've seen that he is present. I would like to welcome him especially. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, any further uh, questions, regard my friend? Uh, still uh, guarding the tomb. Um, we wait for that. Um, there's another question um, about the circle start. How did that actually work? Yeah. Um, in, as you know, an, uh, an uh, aircraft has to uh, take off in the wind. And uh, if there is no wind, aircraft have difficulties in getting off, especially in those days. So the, by making the uh, circle start, and because of the, uh, the fact that uh, Dornier Waal has a sponsoon, uh, has two sponsoons, half wings on both sides of the boat, uh, enough wind and waves were created uh, to get the uh, the possibility to get, to take off. Okay. Um, and then there seems to be also an interest in the more modern, in the new version of the Dornier Wall. Um, people are asking uh, whether there is a company that is producing the Dornier Wall now. I mean, I think yes. before. Yeah, the new joint venture, it is a German-Chinese uh, 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 um, joint venture, uh, will produce the, uh, the new sea, for Dornier Sea Star in Wuxi uh, in China. Um, I, I know that several times uh, Indonesia was offered the possibility to construct this uh, flying boat, and, uh, but it was never realized. 
Okay, yeah, there, there, there seems to be uh, some enthusiasm about the new uh, Tony Award for Indonesia. Um, people are also uh, asking here uh, whether we are going to see uh, flying boats again with the sizes of the Dornia DO 24K and the Catalinas, because according yeah. to that person, uh, nowadays we only see smaller ones, uh, two seaters and the Sea Star. Um. I told you in East Asia, in Japan and in China, new big uh, um, uh, amphibious flying boats are being constructed. Uh, um, uh, in China, the new AG 600 and uh, uh, the, uh, in Japan, the Michiwa, uh, Michiwa yeah. Excuse me at the moment, this is, uh, I do not get the name right. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, soon the new Dornier uh, Sea Star uh, will be uh, operational in China. Okay. Um, then there's one question uh, why? Uh, the development of the flying boat uh, was slow or weaker compared to, to yes. other companies. Yes, that is an, uh, yeah. a very important and uh, question, uh, uh, Mike and all uh, my other friends here present. Um, during the war, the, the last war, the, the, the last uh, World War II. Uh, the Americans uh, constructed more and more bombers and bombers able to, uh, to fly between uh, gender, uh, gender in Canada, in Labrador, uh, towards Ireland, uh, uh, Shannon Air, uh, Air uh, Port and, uh, and uh, Prestwick Airport in Scotland. And, um, that meant that after the war, the, uh, the common point of opinion became that uh, with this development of uh, planes crossing the ocean without having to, uh, to land uh, on the water, it, uh, the flying boat was not uh, was a thing of the past. And, uh, that was also present, I think, in Indonesia. That sort, as every, uh, as everywhere, new uh, airports or airfields were developed, uh, and uh, the idea of the flying boat was forgotten. And that was elsewhere the same. Uh, uh, and uh, the aircraft, in the especially American aircraft industry, did not anything to uh, to uh, push uh, uh, flying boats or amphibious uh, flying boats anymore and uh, so the idea was forgotten however um, the son of uh, Claude Dornier, Claudius Dornier and I had the pleasure to have known him and he gave me uh, entrance to all photography material regarding the wall uh, in the Dornier archives with the right uh, to use it in such way that uh, yeah that future generations would have something of it and I think I did so with my books. Yeah. Um, then there is an, uh, a question, a follow-up question to that one, because you said uh, the idea of the flying boat uh, was forgotten. Um, so how come that it is now being built again? Um, what is the reason for that? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yes, there's also, an, uh, uh, there are many reasons that are also close um, to uh, to Indonesian interests 
in this mm -hmm. way that uh, uh, in I think 2005 we had that big Shima tsunami, uh, and um, uh, the whole in, the first thing that was destroyed was the infrastructure of the islands, and, uh, 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 such as ports, airports, uh, um, facilities, and with a uh, flying boat you can easily drive, especially with an ambitious, uh, ambitious flying boat, you can easily drive on, on the beach and to disembark people to be able to, to, to give immediate support uh, uh, to those in need. And um, I, uh, also the disappearance of an uh, uh, Air Malaysia um, air, uh, uh, passenger plane in the Indian Ocean, they might have had uh, an opportunity to find the, the um, samples, oil samples on places. They have seen oil uh, samples, but were, came to always too late by a ship to collect the samples. If you had, you would have had a, uh, mm -hmm. a flying boat, you might, might have been able to to land in the close by and take a sample and uh, locate the uh, to, to have at least an indication to have the location mm. of the wreck. Okay, so I think that also answered uh, another question that is here in the chat um, whether this kind of technology is something that uh, is suitable for an archipelagic country like Indonesia um, to also to support the island interconnection. Um, I think we have the answer already to that, yeah. Uh, tourism, very, very important. And it is a clean way of uh, tourism, but also for the environment, uh, looking for uh, islands of plastic and, uh, uh, and uh, sending boats to collect those uh, rubbish. Uh, spoiling uh, our beautiful uh, blue planet okay i would say uh, we do one more question um that is more uh, a technical question um somebody's asking or saying that uh it is interesting that modern seaplanes uh in indonesia still use the push pull type of engine uh same as the donia wall um and the person is asking why is it like that? Why do they still have the same um, system? Yeah, this is a very important question and it has also everything to do with, uh, with the fact that we are talking about a flying boat. Uh, the biggest enemy of the, uh, of the flying boat, as it was known in the 30s and later on too, as long as they were metal, was of course uh, er uh, corrosion. And corrosion that was a, a steady fight uh, from the first day the flying boat was being used. And also the engines had to be, uh, had to be protected. And that's why it was uh, considered important to make, to construct uh, the flying boats in such way that the engines were as high as possible in order to avoid uh, contact as as much as possible with the seawater, and that's why they were so high, and the, and the and they came to the idea to use a push and a pull engine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for this explanation um, and for answering answering all the questions. Um, there were a few more, but uh, we cannot answer all the questions. Um, so uh, now I hope that uh, everybody paid attention before uh, to the presentation, because now we come to a little game, uh, to a, a quiz um, where we have prepared some questions. And um, yeah, the winner can take home, or we will send the winner uh our oktoberfest mark from last year but um only if you're located in indonesia we will not send it to south africa or to germany or other countries 
but if you are in Indonesia, feel free to pick it up. So, Rebecca? Yeah? Yeah, we can start with Mahut now. Uh, okay, so, uh, first, uh, pertama, siapkan ponsel Anda, ketiklah kahut.it pada browser Anda, dan masukkan pinnya. Gunakan username sesuai nama Anda untuk memudahkan kami dalam pengiriman hadiah kepada pemenang. First, prepare your phone, type kahut.it on your browser, and enter the pin. Use your first name, it will help us for sending prize to the winner. Sebentar lagi saya akan uh, melakukan share screen untuk kahutnya. Nanti Bapak Ibu bisa melihat kodenya. After this, I will share screen the kahut and you can see the pin of the game. So yeah, from my side, a short explanation in English again. Um, please go to the website uh, www.kahoot.it. Uh, um, you will see it in a minute. Um, and uh, there you enter the code that we will show you on the screen. And then you will enter our game. And please, uh, for us to identify you, please use your username that you use here in, in the room. Uh, there it is. Say we start. So we will start now. So just look at the question on the screen and answer it on your phone.
Wow, banyak sekali yang benar. Oh Lanjut iya. Ke pertanyaan selanjutnya. So you paid attention, we can see that. Oke, yang di puncak nomor satu ada Pak Purwanto. Pak Purwanto followed by Max. So when was the first ever flying boat used? In which year? Can you remember that? Let's see how many people answered correct. Wow, banyak sekali. Ada 10 orang. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. Oke, okay. kita lihat apakah masih umpin klasemen. Wah, wow, menyusul Max di nomor pertama. Wee. Pak Max, lalu Pak Gary Suyatman. Kita lihat yes. apakah masih memimpin di soal selanjutnya. Let's see, let's see whether somebody can uh, overtake Mr. Max. Who flew to the North Pole with the Dornier Wild Flying Boat? Any idea? Okay, banyak juga yang menjawab okay. benar. Rod Amutsen. I think that was an easy one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, masih tetap Pak wow. Max, Pak Gary, dan Pak. Hans. Max is going to to win this. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to compete with him. Yeah. Who tried to fly around the world with the Dornier Wild? Jules Verne, Ramon Franco, Phileas Fogg, or Alexander von Humboldt? Ah, okay. this is uh, divided, yeah? But, yeah, some people answered correctly. Yeah. Alexander von Humboldt was not using airplanes uh, when he was traveling the world. Okay, sepertinya posisi Max tergeser dengan Bapak Gary. Mm -hmm. Pak Gary, ya. Yeah. Okay, kita lanjutkan. Yeah, who was the first to cross the Atlantic from Europe to North America in a Donia Wall? These are all uh, famous uh, people in the field of aviation. Um, the Wright brothers, of course, Otto Lilienthal and uh, Graf von Zeppelin. But I see everybody answered, almost everybody answered correctly here. Yeah? Ah, it's a race between pa Gary and pa Max so far. What does wild mean in English? <laughs> yeah, this was uh, clearly the easiest one, yeah. <laughs> nobody, nobody got that wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, still Mr. Gary Suryatman. Still a close race, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and only four more questions to go. Which German airline used the Donia Wild for the Transocean Mail Service? Was it Air Berlin, Lufthansa, Condor, or German Wings? Yeah, uh, seems like most of the people paid very well attention uh, to what, what, what Mr. Van der May was saying before. 
So almost everybody answered correctly here. Okay, still Mr. Gary Soyatman, Mr. Max, and Mr. Andre. Yeah, how much time was required to deliver mail from Europe to South America with the Dona Wall? Yeah, and 12 people answered correctly. It was four days. And uh, as we heard from Mr. Van der May, nowadays uh, it can take much longer than that. Okay. Okay, yeah. now pa Pagiri is uh, separating himself from the rest. Yeah, he is leading so, this class. Now. Yeah, he's already leading the field. So, and what was the main purpose of the Donia Wall in Indonesia? Ears of the troops, eyes of the fleet, nose of the cavalry, and feet of the Air Force, actually. There's a word missing. Wow, there's a lot. <laughs> Answer again, in the right answer. Okay. Again, most of the people are correct here. Yeah. And now we come to the last question, I guess. Okay. And we know we are, we are see who is the winner. Yeah. And we will see who is the winner. Exactly. So which building can be clearly seen in the background of the parade in Surabaya? Is it the Machapayat Hotel? Is it the Japanese Museum? Is it the Surabaya Post Office or Wisma German? Oh, wow, that's uh, surprising. But still, most of the people uh, knew the right answer um, the Japanese Museum. Um, and yeah, now we see the final results and uh, determine who are the winners of this beautiful mug. Yeah, so congratulations. Okay, congratulations. Uh, congratulations. Pa Gary, uh, pa Max and pa Andre. <laughs> um, Please uh, inform us about your address. If you're located in Surabaya, you can also pick it up. Um, otherwise, we will send it to you uh, via mail. But unfortunately, not with the Dornier Wall, I, I guess. So. Okay, I hope this was... Uh, A, a little bit of entertainment um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, it showed that uh, most of you paid uh, attention to the presentation and I think it is, it was a very interesting presentation um, by Mr. Van der May. Um, before we come to the end of this event, um, we would like to take a picture together. Um, Unfortunately, we cannot be all together in one place, but yeah, we take a screenshot. Um, Rebecca, will you, yeah. yeah, will you guide us through the photo shooting? Okay, so uh, now we have a photo session. Please, if you don't mind, turn on your webcam. Jadi sekarang kita ada photo session bersama. Jika Bapak Ibu tidak keberatan, silahkan untuk menyalakan webcamnya. Nanti saya hitung dari satu, dua, dan tiga. Nanti yang ketiga sama-sama kasih uh, sim terbaiknya. <laughs> Later I will count one, two, three, and at the three, you will give the, your best smile. Okay. Wait.
Let's wait for the others. Yeah, for the others. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> All of you? I want to take your photo. One, two, three, hold. Okay, I want to take once more. One, two, three, and hold. Okay, wait, I will, I have to check it first. <laughs> Now I want to take uh, another photo. Wait, one, two, three, and hold. Okay, thank you very much for your time. I think uh, all of you have a very good smile. <laughs> Oh yeah, and now uh, on behalf of the organizers, Wisma German, uh, our director, Mr. McNoiber, will give us a few words of closing. Atas nama penyelenggara acara, Director Wisma German, Mr. McNoiber, akan memberikan sepatah dua patah kata sebagai penutup malam ini. Yeah, thank you very much, Rebecca, and also thank you everybody for uh, giving us a big smile for the picture. Um, before I say goodbye and uh, thank you everybody, I would like to invite Mr. Van der May um, to, yeah, to thank everybody and uh, just convey what he wants to convey. Um, Rebecca, can you turn on Mr. Van der May's microphone? Sure. Yeah. Wait. Please, yes. Mr. Van der May. Yeah. Prima Kasi uh, for everybody. Thank you for your interest. And I would like to thank uh, Wisma German uh, in Surabaya for uh, making this uh, possible. And I would like uh, to give a book, my book, to uh, Wisma German uh, in uh, Surabaya uh, in memory of uh, this great occasion. Again, prima kasi. It will be uh, uh, given to you by uh, Robin Alexander and uh, 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 Ibu Ling. Thank you very much, Mr. Van der May. We will, uh, we will keep it in high honor and uh, it will also remind us of this uh, special event. Um, it is also a special event for us. Um, it is the first online event for us with a speaker from Germany, directly live. Uh, and um, yeah, it is something that is um, not an everyday topic um, and uh, I'm very glad that we could be um, the host for this event um, and do this together with you. Uh, I thank you very much for this good cooperation um, for, for your presentation today and I very much hope um, that you will come to Surabaya again and that we have uh, the opportunity to meet again um, and maybe also to visit the statue together, <laughs> um, the ominous statue, yeah. Um, yeah, then I would like also would like to thank to uh, everybody who joined tonight. Um, we had uh, representatives of several universities here, um, of University Petra, of uh, ITS, of uh, University Dinamica and of uh, Universitas Erlanga. Um, also, thank you very much for the representatives uh, of House of Sampona, um, whom, whom we uh, know very well. Um, thank you to the Kepala Canto, Bosque Bonrejo, 
who also joined tonight, uh, Dino Ariadi. Um, uh, we had a cooperation in the past, so we know him also quite well. Um, thank you to, um, of course, uh, to Mr. Novera Belesmana, um, the defense defense attaché of the Republic of Indonesia to the Netherlands um, at the Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia. And uh, also thank very much for the representatives of uh, Good Night from Indonesia, Pa Ahari, Ahyari Hananto. I uh, I apologize if I read that wrong. Yeah. Um, and also thank very much to uh, the representatives of Java Pos, uh, Hari and Surabaya, uh, uh, Hari and Surya, and She Radio. Um, so we also had some uh, media representatives here. Um, hopefully, we can also read about this event uh, in your media. Um, I would also. Uh, look forward uh, to the opportunity to have a similar event like that again uh, in Wismar German, not just online, with everybody um, being there and uh, we are able to uh, have a better exchange because uh, this way it is, uh, it's not so very interactive as it, it could be. Yeah, um, but this is the limitations uh, we are facing right now due to the uh, Corona crisis. Um, I hope everybody is safe and healthy um, and it will stay like that. Um, thank you very much for joining tonight. Um, if you if you are interested, please uh, have a look at our website. Um, you can learn something about Germany, uh, German culture, German language. Um, also, like I said before, um, when we have a more or less normal situation and we can open up our office again, uh, we would be more than happy to welcome you um, at our office um, or at one of our other events. Yeah, so thank you very much for this evening. And yes, I wish all of you a great evening and a great weekend and hopefully see you soon at some point. Okay, terima kasih banyak untuk Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Pak Noiber. Dengan ini Bye. acara Donner Wall Light Coming After the Sea sudah selesai. Saya mengucapkan terima kasih banyak atas kehadiran Anda dan keaktifan Anda selama acara berlangsung. Tetap sehat dan selamat berakhir pekan. Thank you very much uh, Mr. Noiber. With this, the program of the Donner Wall Light coming up for the sea has been completed. I thank you for, very much for your kind attendance and active engagement for tonight. Stay healthy and have a great weekend. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.